Now, one of the world's busiest travel hubs, Dubai International Airport, has partially resumed operations after heavy flooding forced it to close on Wednesday. The standstill came after the United Arab Emirates was hit by a record-breaking storm. More rain fell in a 24-hour period than ever before. At least one person was killed and many homes and businesses were damaged. The aftermath of an unprecedented Gulf storm. The streets of Dubai turned into concrete rivers, bringing the Middle East's financial capital to a standstill. Abandoned cars littered the roads. And police found one feline resident clinging for dear life, saved in the nick of time. At Dubai's busy airport, the storm may have passed, but the troubles are far from over. With so many grounded jets taking up space, there's little tarmac left for new arrivals. Inside, the terminals are crowded with stranded passengers trying to get rebooked after their flights were canceled. There are hundreds and thousands of other passengers just like me in this airport who have been waiting for 10 hours, 16 hours, some even for 24 to 30 hours. It's not raining outside. It's the weather is clear, it's sunny, uh, water logging, the water level has gone down. While it's not clear to what extent climate change may have caused the historic rainfall, experts say it's an example of the kind of extreme weather we can only expect to increase as temperatures rise around the world. With climate change, what we see a lot um, is that you expect increased intensity of storms like this, of heavy, heavy rainfall, um, and increased conditions to form storms to even begin to think about precipitation. As the climate changes, the Gulf is expected to experience bigger and more frequent rainstorms. But for now, there is more immediate work at hand, cleaning up debris, clearing roads, and assessing the damage from the historic downpour. Right, let's get more from Raghu Mutagudda. He's an earth system scientist and professor at the Indian Institute of Technology. He joins me from Mumbai. Good to see you. Uh, what explains these heavy downpours? Yeah, so this is a unique situation. Everything is happening in a warmer world now. We have warmed by about 1.2, 1.3 degrees centigrade since the Industrial Revolution. And so all weather events are happening in a warmer climate. What is unique about this situation now is that we are just in the middle of an El Nino that is coming to an end. We can talk about what an El Nino is uh, afterwards, but uh, that tends to warm the temperatures even more. So we added the El Nino warming to global warming, and the Middle East and the Mediterranean are a hot spot for warming as well, which is changing winds over the Arabian Sea, and the Arabian Sea is warming, which is pumping more moisture in certain circumstances into the Middle East. So we created these combinations to have a Western disturbance that is coming from the Mediterranean called a Medicane that ran into the circulation that was set up on the Arabian Sea and just squeezed so much water out of this system that they got multiple years of rain in just a few hours. Okay, you, you touched on it. Let's talk about it for context. What are El Nino and La Nina? So if you think about the tropical Pacific, the Galapagos, which is so famous, it is usually cold under normal circumstances. And when it is cold, it is taking up heat from the atmosphere and storing it in the ocean. Every few years, because of what we call internal variability or natural variability, the uh, waters become much warmer than normal and a lot of the heat that is stored in the ocean gets released. And it's called El Nino because it happens around Christmas time. El Nino means the child as in the Christ child. So the Spaniards in the 18th century named it the gift from God or the little child El Nino. And we are in the middle of it. So it added to the global warming that was already happening. So 2023 was a record warm year. And now it is transitioning to what is called a La Nina, which means on some years, especially following big El Ninos like we have just had, the waters around Galapagos get much colder than normal, in which case uh -huh. you begin to have another kind of change over the Indian and the Middle East region. So those changes were already happening, 
and then we added this western disturbance coming uh, bringing moisture from the mediterranean arabian sea pumping the moisture okay. so it's a combination of global warming and natural variability I want to fact check one final thing with you while we've got you. The UAE sometimes resorts to using cloud seeding for rain. It involves using compounds fired into the clouds from planes or cannons to create rain droplets. The UAE says cloud seeding wasn't used in this particular instance, but if it were, could it create this amount of rain? So as soon as the flood happened, I looked at uh, whether they, had, they were doing or had done cloud seeding just before, and there is no evidence that they did it. But despite that, when you do cloud seeding, existing clouds can drop some rain. But to create this amount of rain, you don't get this amount of water on the Middle East, in the deserts, or even from the Mediterranean. You need a massive, massive source of water. And this happened by the large scale wind changes that brought water from the Arabian Sea combined with the Medicaid that was coming from the Mediterranean. So cloud seeding, even if it was happening, there was no way it could have produced such a massive amount of rain. So that should be set aside. Raku Mutagita, fantastic to get your insights. Thank you so much. Thank you.